Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Benchmade Aileron. Um, this is a knife that when I first saw it in pictures, I was really intrigued by. And then uh, I read a bit more about it and didn't really understand some stuff. And now that I've had it in hand, I just, I'll come out and fully admit it. Um, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, I, I'm sure there is some purpose to it, but uh, I... I don't get it, and I am a guy who probably should get it. This is designed for the avi aviation industry by Steve Tarani. He has a very unique uh, two-hand open tactical fighting method thing. Um, and uh, I was a pilot. Granted, not the people he's aiming it at. He's like, uh, you know, uh, I think he's mostly aiming at like military pilots, like cargo pilots, stuff like that. I flew mostly light aircraft haven't had a license for a very long time. I had minimal tactical knife training in the military uh, when I was in the Air Force. But, um, yeah, I, I can't say I really understand this. I think it, it is very close to being an excellent knife, though. So it is still worth watching the review and talking about. There's just a couple things I just I just really don't understand. Uh, it is typical kind of uh, bench-made specs that you'd expect. Axis lock, S30V steel. Uh, G10 handles, uh, 199 bucks. Not, not terribly inexpensive. I do have to say, it does come with a deep carry clip, uh, one of the nice coated ones. Uh, its main design feature that sticks out is this kind of grippy stuff on the uh, on the blade. They call it laser textured. I thought maybe it was laser etched in. I thought from the pictures it was these were probably any holes. They are definitely Audi holes. Not quite sure how all that works. They call it laser textured, but I don't know. Looks just kind of stuck on to me, but I'm not I'm not really certain about that. Also has a thumb hole deployment, which is what you're gonna use 99% of the time, I think. Uh, it does have all the great Benchmade action, all that stuff. Very smooth in deployment and all that. Uh, let's do some specs and size comparisons before we get too much farther. Length is almost dead on eight inches. Blade length just a bit under 3.5 inches. You have a blade thickness pretty thin, 0 0.12 inches a handle thickness of 0 0.54, and a weight of 4.24 ounces. So definitely not a lightweight, but not a complete tank either, especially looking at the size and the height of this blade. I do a few uh, size comparisons and we'll get moving on. Put it in our usual Spyderco sandwich between the uh, Paramilitary 2 and Para 3. As you can see, uh, just a little bit shorter than the PM2. Quite a bit bigger than a pair of three. Oh, what else do we have out here? We will use, since this is a Benchmade, we will use one of our other ones that we use here a lot, one of our other standards. Your full-size Griptilian. It's a little larger than that. And, oh, why not? It's sitting here. Your Kershaw Bare Knuckle. Again, just a little bit shorter than that. It's not a particularly long knife, but a, a kind of tall knife. Um, let's just get into what about this. I always start out with the blade, and I, I almost kind of don't want to start out with the blade on this knife because it's the thing I have the problem with, and to me it's the most important thing in the knife. Uh, pretty thin blade stock. Um, saber ground, which would probably be okay uh, normally with a blade stock this thin, but it is very thick behind the edge. Uh, look at about... I averaged it out about 30 thousandths, um, which I get. This is kind of a tactical knife. I understand that, I guess. Uh, um, and then it has this grippy stuff for this two-hand two -hand open thing, which you can't possibly do when you're trying to negotiate lights in a thing, but some kind of fighting thing he does. It's supposed to be you pull it out with the two hands and you wind up in some kind of fighting stance. Um, do you have room enough to do that on an airplane? It's going to be a pretty big airplane. Uh, but um, it does definitely, the first question I get is, does it affect the cutting? Yes, it does. I, I can't deny that it does. It, is it a huge difference? No. But when you're making long cuts in cardboard and stuff, yeah, you can you can hear it dragging. You can hear the, you know, it's just, it's just louder uh, when it gets on this grippy stuff. Um, if this was a full flat grind... I would probably really like this knife overall. I really would if it was just a full flat and didn't have this stuff on it. Because um, it's a full flat, it'd probably be at least what, 
even if they didn't really try very hard, it would probably be 20,000, a little under that, because it's such a high, a high, uh, you know, such a tall blade and, and such a thin blade stock. I really think it could have been a great slicer. Tip's really good. It's got a really good, you know, piercing tip on it, which I guess you expect from a tactical thing. Um, but this blade is just a no for me. I Okay, it works for that tactical thing, but I keep thinking, can you just grab it like that? Can you just grab the hole that's already there and do the same thing I, and not have to deal with this grippy stuff? I'm not a tactical fighting expert. He is, so perfectly, uh, perfectly willing to admit I'm wrong if somebody can explain it to me. But uh, I've watched the video demonstrating the technique and stuff. I still don't get it. Uh, don't care for this blade at all. Ergonomically, it's actually really good. It does fit in the hand very well, and being a tactical knife, as you'd expect, it fits great in reverse grip if that's your thing. Uh, but even just normal use, really good. The jimping is aggressive without being over the top. The pocket clip is great. The way it's angled doesn't uh, affect, you know, does, there's no hot spots at all. I really like it ergonomically. I think it's I think it's great. Uh, as far as it carries, also not not too bad. As I said, it is a bit tall, so it is going to take up a bit of room in the pocket, but it's not crazy. Let's get in here. You can definitely still get your hand past it. No problem at all. No flipper tab, so there's nothing sticking out there. As you can see, carries fairly deep. No problem all the way it carries. Weight's a bit much, but it, it's not, not crazy. 4.24 ounces is definitely not a tank by any stretch of the means. Uh, Action-wise, yeah, it's Benchmade. Uh, flicks out good. Axis lock works good. You know, I, I like that. It will shake open, I will say, without a whole lot of effort. Uh, I think that's a lot, just an axis lock with a blade this heavy. I think I had a, what was it, the Presidio 2 was kind of the same way. And I think even, yeah, I think even the Griptilian, if I really whack on it, yeah. I can get the Griptilian to, wick, to flick out too. I have to try a lot harder, but, uh, Still, uh, someone else said they thought it was a bad detent. I don't think it's a bad detent. I think it's just an axis lock with a really heavy blade on it because this just so thick. I know it's only 0.12 inch blade stock thickness, but there's a lot of metal here that, that could definitely have been cut away, and I think it would have been fine. Um, Overall, yeah, I don't get it, especially for $200. I just don't get it. It's such a specialized kind of knife. Um... And maybe I just I just don't understand, which I'm fully I'm fully willing to admit that. As I said, I, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Um, my cats I don't understand them at all. But I, I don't I don't get this knife. I'm sorry this is such a short little review, uh, but that this blade is just kind of a complete disqualifier for me. I probably could have made this 30 second review and just said I don't get it and moved on. But uh, I tried to explain why I didn't get it. So. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Hope this is some valuable consumer advice. I've been Brian. Have a good one.